Hey guys, what's up? Life has been absolutely insane lately for me, as I'm sure it has been for you. And I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try to be as detailed as I can. But this is the video that I have to make. This is about Bob. This is about Bob. There's so much to say, there's so much to feel, there's so much to cover. I don't know if I can get it, I can't get it all in one video. I can't, you know. I wrote a bunch of notes, I'm, I'm gonna go off my dome. I'm doing a lot of different things, from Hollywood stuff, to business stuff, to health stuff, to real estate stuff, and um, and then Bob died. And that just, just fucking superseded everything. I've been wanting to talk about it, but I haven't had as much time because I've had all of these commitments of stuff and I and I apologize. You know, I've been posting a little bit and um, you know, nothing is more important than this and I just I want to do it correctly. So where where can I even start? I first heard of Bob Saget on Now forgive me if I make mistakes. Buddy was one of the few people in town, my buddy John, who you'll meet. He's one of the few people that had HBO, Prism, Showtime. He had all the cable channels. My my mom thought we were going to go broke if we got cable. So his living room was the spot. His house was the spot. He had the four-level house, and it's, it was great. And so we used to watch movies all the time. That's what we, we, you know, we both got into acting. We used to watch HBO a lot. It's the first time I ever saw Delirious, Eddie Murphy on HBO. I saw George Carlin, a stuff bit. On HBO, um, and Rodney. I used to just love, love Rodney. Possibly the, the most, they say the greatest POV in comedy. Like, you know, okay, okay, you know, like that. No respect. And uh, I want to say on the special, Sam Kinison. I think he was on that special. It helped blow him up. I want to say Dice. It was an insane special. It's like legendary in the comedy. It's really legendary in the world, but it's legendary in the comedy community. Rodney presented a bunch of young comedians. And one of the first acts in it was Bob. And he's this wonderfully, very beautifully dressed man, like 80s, you know, with the tie. And I think he had a suit coat on. And, and me and my boy, we're probably sophomores in high school. So we're like 15 or 16. And we're just... Dying or who is we were the whole special is just so insane. We're watching, but I just remember seeing Bob and going, This guy, you know, looks like a wonderful, you know, vanilla chocolate, and then he comes in there with a fucking samurai sword. And it was, it was something you didn't see because it was HBO. You have to understand when we grew up, it was Johnny Carson. And if you wanted to hear some raw shit, you bought an album. You didn't listen to it on the radio. There's no comedy. There's none of this stuff. You bought the shit or somebody made a tape for you from the album. And if not, you went to HBO. HBO was the only joint. Like, I know you love Netflix and Netflix is great, but only sir, a very few amount of specials came out of here. Very little. And when they did, it was an event. So this was, a, you know, that special. That was the first time I ever saw Bob. And I just, I just saw he was... Hilarious. I just, you know, I was like, this guy is hilarious. And then I, I want to say, then I got to remember seeing him on Full House. Now, Full House wasn't my generation. I was a little older. So it hit people like Stu because they, they were younger than me. He was like seven years younger. So it hit him on the TGI Friday. And I'm like, oh, that's the dude. I was like, wow, this is such a nice, like sweet dad persona on this. And yet I saw the HBO special, <laughs> which I think that he would want me to think and everybody to think that he's the HBO guy. So that was already an amazing work on his part that he could be this dark, wild, edgy, shocking at times. It was hilarious. Brilliant. And but then on TV every Friday night he's winning Friday nights being this cute dad. And then I really started to get to know him because Bob is besides being a pioneer of like TGI Fridays on ABC, he then did America's Funniest Videos. And that was AFV. Like, that was your guy's YouTube. Like, it was the only thing. It was just, like, Grandma Slips on Poop. And, you know, it was uh, sweet versions of Two Girls, One Cup. And, and it was just fucking amazing. So it was, like, appointment viewing. And I would watch that shit 
religiously at seven. And when he left, I was bombs. I was bummed because I didn't watch TV on Friday night. I went out with my friends and we drank and did stuff. And But Sunday night I was in, so I watched it all the time after football. Also, I'd heard that Bob was from Philly. So that was like, oh, my God, this is like a local hero. How does this guy do this? He's from Philly. That's my introduction to Bob, just like, just like you. So cut to my next real interaction with him is... Uh, Probably Nick at night, but really like guys like Stu and his whole generation who grew up watching him in first run TV would then binge him at night on Nick at night. And I had, you know, I started making a little money and I have Nick at night. So I didn't really sit and watch Fall House all the time, but I would, you know, see like, you know, change the channel and stuff. I'm like, oh, there's, there's Bob Saget, you know. And because all the guys... Well, Dave Coulier also. There were Bob and Dave was these super comedians, you know, and and John Stamos was just a super musician, you know. But they're all actors, but they all really had other jobs, you know. So the comedy world knew these guys. So I used to go to this juice place. I'm just trying to tell you every fact. I used to go to this juice place all the time in the mid to late '90s. I drink coffee in the morning now, but I used to have this little juice place. It was a little hut, and I would read the variety. And, you know, Scream had already come out. I think Scream 2 had already come out. A couple of movies. I started, I started making a little bit of money. So I would get up and have this, like, $4 smoothie. I probably have two of them in a day. I would s- just totally scour Variety in the Reporter for deals and movies and such. You know, the funny thing is that Dave Chappelle has so many uh, legs to his career in different eras. But at this time in his career... He was, you know, everyone knew him as an amazing stand-up, but he was also making a lot of movies. There was a producer by the name of Robert Simons who made a ton of movies, early Adam Sandler, uh, early Martin Lawrence. Like he's done everything. You know, he did them all. And if you were going to break into comedy, you would do, a, you know, a low-budget movie with Robert Simons. You'd make the money, and then you'd get to bigger budgets and stuff. And Dave and um, a young... Door guy who became a writer, a great writer, Neil Brennan, who I had known because he would come to L.A. sometimes. But I didn't really know him, but I knew him. And I knew him. He was like this really amazing writer, but also I didn't. he didn't really do stand-up for a long time. He was making everyone else funny. And then comics that I was on the circuit with and showcasing and starting to get in movies with. They wrote this movie called Half Baked, and Jim Brewer was in it, you know, who was always around. He was more in New York, but coming to L.A. because he's acting a lot. And Harlan... My agent's like, you got to go see Half-Baked. And I'm like, oh, I heard about this. So before Malibu's, I had a, a couple movies I was trying to write. And one of them was like a snowboard movie with a hip-hop feel. And it was me and Scotty Kahn. We were writing it. And I loved I went to the movie theaters. I went to Universal and just watched it up there. And I was laughing. And Because you're seeing people you work with, like Harlan. Who pops up, if it's too long a backstory, is Bob Saget. And he says something. And he's, I, I have to call everything. But he's just like, you know. It's a suck dick for coke. That's all he goes. You know what? Barry she needs to suck dick for coke. Like we, and that was like, <laughs> marijuana is not a drug. I used to suck dick for coke. I seen them. Now that's an addiction, man. You ever suck some dick for marijuana? Yeah. Huh? No, no, I can't say I have. I didn't think so. Fool this man. That was my next four way for Ray. Ray. I'm tired. HBO to Sweet Man, the funniest to Full House, the funniest videos. And then Suck Dick for Coke. And I was crying. And I get I had an agent, I was acting, you know, and doing all that stuff. But I started as I don't know, people say, What'd you start as a stand up actor? I started as both. I started as whatever you'll take me as. I started stand-up a year after I was interested in acting only because people said it will help your acting. Really, 91, started in 90, let's say 91 to 95. Like four years, very just open mic. I grinded with, you know, a couple of spots, like maybe a spot a week or every eight days at a premium club, like a... I stopped stand up around 95, but before years, I was on the open mic and starting to go. 
And I did a like, few, like five, four or five TV shows. And then I, my acting just started getting busier. I'm like, F- I'm making so much money acting. I'm not driving an hour to go to Tony Roma's and play for a baked potato. And I'm in my trailer. I'm tired all the time, so I'll just sleep. I, I, I start a scene and I just run all day or I run and then they let me sleep for two hours. I'm drinking espresso. So I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to do stand up. I'm going to be Michael Keaton. You know, like, like he started, he's, his name is on the wall and lights at the comedy store. He, people, he's a brilliant comedian, but once he got into acting, he fucking said peace to it. So I was like, I'll just do that. So I was doing that. So from 95, so I, so it was about, I, about 97, I call, I, you know, I had all my agents and I didn't have a stand up agent. I'm like, look, I can, I have like 20 minutes, 18 minutes. I go, I, there's time. Like for a long time, I was so busy. I didn't have time. But then I'm like, you know, my next movie's not for three months. What's up with these college gigs? Pretty good money. If you do 20 minutes in front of a bunch of kids eating hot Cheetos. They don't want to look at you. But I had movie credit. So it was weird. Like, why is the guy from that did the rules in that movie here? And blah, blah, blah. And your ego gets hurt, but the colleges send cars for you. Some chick from, you know, the theater department gives you a nice little fat check and then you boom. So I was getting these colleges. I was getting, I was starting off in the triple A's, you know, but getting good money, you know, I had to do 20 minutes here or lunchtime there or spring break there or whatever. And then my agent starts booking me at clubs and I started early as a comic, but I didn't have my chops. So my agent's like, you're going to do 12 to 18 minutes and there's good, there's a really lot of good comics and they'll use you and you just shut the fuck up and do your shit and work and put your recorder on recorder and get better. So there was different comics that would let me go up, you know, and, and, um, Rick Overton, who's a legend, I'm going to have him on. He would let me open for him and he was, these are all comic comics, you know, comics, comics, Craig Shoemaker who just happened to be cast in Scream 2. And I, and he knew that I wanted to really get better. So he invited me to, you know, work with him. And who else? Bob Saget. Who was like the one I knew the most. And she's like, yo, Bob. He said, you can come down and do a couple of guest spots. So I want to say this night. So usually as a comedy show goes, it's like 10 minutes for the MC, 20 minutes for the middle. 50 to an hour for the headliner. It's usually a 90 minute show. And that's, that's it. That's a basic comedy lineup. So they do it a little bit different there, but you know, when you have a big star like Bob that you, he can kind of dictate what the show is. And I don't know how many people Bob brought down, but I just remember there was like seven comics before Bob and they were doing like eight to 10. I did like 10. I did like eight. I remember I was doing my Virginia ham. and So just let's say seven is 78 times seven is 560. W- whatever it is, it was at least an hour of comedy before Bob. Do you know how extremely giving that is? This is one of the many reasons why you're hearing so much about him. Another reason is because it's a complete shock. It's a complete shock. And if I did this video... Two weeks ago, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be getting through it. And I was going to, but I just had to compose myself. But a guy, the biggest name, the biggest star, working out his new hour at the legendary club, letting people that he knows, letting people that are that are good, and letting friends and letting unknowns that he doesn't really know work it out. It's like over an hour of comedy before he gets up. I'll never forget it. And he did like another hour. I want to say there was like 70 minutes in. So a typical show would be done at 90. Like I said, he easily did another hour, an hour 15. And they could not get enough. They wanted another hour. I mean, he did this fucking hour worth of fucking jokes and just murdering them in front of all these other people with people who do so many different premises. Did they step on a premise? I mean, that's in fucking possible to do. And then he breaks out the guitar for 20. I mean, it was, I just, just remember, I just remember not how, not just how funny it was, not how, just how brilliant it was, but just how giving it was. I was like, dude, this is insane. Like you're, 
it was his show and it was just a night. And he did that for people that he knew and for people that he didn't know. If you can take anything away from that video, that's who this man was. This man was empathetic. This man always wanted to make sure you're doing okay. And a lot of times, I'm sure at the detriment of his own feeling good. And that's another part of the video. So that's my intro into Bob, how I met him, just like you, how I was a fan of him, just like you, and then how I was fortunate enough to start working with him. So, you know, I'm doing stand-up, and I don't, you know, this is late eight nineties, you know, so I got a development deal, like two years later, movies, you know, I was developing like my own starting vehicle, and it was hard to get off the ground. Got my show going into WB. Bob had his next for for Ray into television. He was raising dad. And that was a show that was on. And it was becoming a hit. It was Bob Saget as a dad. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be another, like, hit for him. This guy has, like, hits in the 80s, hits in the 90s, hits in the 2000s. Like, this was, like, 2000, 2001. You, they had a lot of functions, man. The WB had a lot of functions, man. You, I swear, I wish my show was on for 10 years now. And I think a lot of people do. But there was a good three years in there where it shows that were on for a while and shows that weren't, we all just, I f it felt like a family. It felt like a family. Bob was a central figure of that because he was the dad. So he was all kind of like our dad or a big brother or our uncle. And like, you know, he was that figure and, uh, and an already an established, obviously, legend. And then I was like the new, like, w wacky neighbor dude. And then there was like the younger. And so I you know, would see Bob around and, you know, a hug and how you doing? I just show and stuff like that. And um, the first big moment I had in in a seminal moment in my career, if this is my first, like, you know, a touchstone moment, you know. I always say that Justin Timberlake is so huge because he's been involved with so many touchstone moments from Nipplegate, obviously NSYNC and his music. But he was one of the, he was the first guy punked. He's dick in a box. So he's he's real smart to touch all these different things and it keeps him so relevant. And, you know, I was doing Jimmy Kang Experiment and it was starting to hit. And in the first collaboration, well, the second collaboration, the first one was comedy clubs. But, you know, those weren't like broadcast was JKX. So we always had this bit and it was called Kobe's Knee. And we would sit in the writer's room and... Kobe's knee was, Kobe was just like, they were winning championships. It was the red hot moment of the Lakers, LA fucking, I don't care. You can win championships anywhere in the world. You don't win them like you win in LA. Just, the Lakers were just, you know, Shaq and Kobe, baby. There was a bit called Kobe's knee. So Kobe the, was the hottest basketball player in the world, along with Shaq. And we wanted to do a bit where Kobe was in on it. And it's a lot of backstory, but I'm just trying to give you texture. And we get the biggest fucking Jamoko that thinks he can ball, like, you know, the fucking weekend warrior. And for charity, up to five, let him play Kobe one-on-one. -on -one. And then Jamoko knows he probably can't win, but if he can get a, a bucket on Kobe, you know, on the Mamba, then he'll, you know, it'll be like that. So, so we were like, you know, looking at... You know, different people wanted to come in and there were these guys and they're fucking. And we were really getting close to doing it. And uh, and the bit was the guy was like, Kobe's going to act like the guy crossed him over or something. And then Kobe fucking goes down. He's like, oh, my knee, my knee. And then everyone, all of a sudden, someone sees it from the outside and then fucking KTLA and everyone comes in and like, Are, is this true that you were playing a pickup game with Kobe and he blew out his knee on your move, on your crossover? What? And then the guy would be like, whoa, whoa, And so it was going to be, and it was like in the middle of their championship run. And it would have been huge. You know, it was like, <laughs> we, the WB was in the way. Bottom line was somebody from, I want to say Kobe's agent. I don't even know how far it got to Kobe. When I talked to him, I never I asked him that. I wish I did. We were talking about PlayStation. Somebody said, you want me to have, you know, the best basketball player in the world. Fake a knee injury. I don't want to put that in the fucking universe, which makes total sense. <laughs> like it could, could happen. Anyway, they didn't want to fuck. Kobe was like six years in the league, already got two championships. 
So they didn't want to do it. So we're like, we need another big ass, you know, what they call a, a sweeps bit. This is what that was. It would have been a big promo. And so, you know, our producers are brilliant, you know. So Adam, I believe it was Adam and me, you know, Fax and Adam Small and Fax Bar. They came up with maybe Brian Hart. I don't know. We're all sitting in there and here like, what if we do a tour of a celebrity's house and you play like one of your scumbag characters? You'll be like a scumbag tour bag because because we would be in the office and the TMZ bus or Hollywood tour bus maybe it was before TMZ the Hollywood tour bus would always come by and I'm like and they were always pointing out shit and you can hear them on the bullhorn this is where the shows Jamie Kennedy experiment and like right outside the window like Jamie Kennedy's in there right now urinating like they said shit you know and they're like yo dude you're like blowing our cover so at this time it was just so great because it was like middle school and we just put millions of dollars you know what I mean that's that's why Hollywood is great when it's great. But now, got a lot of hall monitors. So they're like, we got to fucking do a bit. Like, that's great. And they go, and then they said, it's the only tour that takes you inside the celebrity's house. <laughs> and when they said that, I'm like, that's fucking, <laughs> it's brilliant, man. I cried and I was like, that's so funny. You know, obviously we have to execute it, but I'm like, that's a really fucking crazy concept. And that was a perfect way to push the show. Will people go in? So we're there and we're like, who can we get? We're talking to Jordan, who's the president of the network. And he's like, what about Bob? And I'm like, Bob Saget. And he's like, yeah. Jordan was really good about that. He's like, let's, you know, use other people on the network. Let's keep it in the family. Like, that was so good, you know, like blow up his brand. And he's like, I want to promo their show. You need a big fucking hit piece. We call, we get on the phone with Bob. We put him in the speaker and Bob's like, hey, what's going on? What? Tour my house. What? I don't want people in my house. Like, I just remember... And we're like, no, 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 no. It's like, we're going to do this whole bit. And and he's like, okay, yeah, that sounds interesting. All right. And he had some ideas. This is 20 years ago, but I'm trying to remember it all. But I don't know. In like two days, he called back. His people called back. And he's like, let's do it. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, it was fucking incredible. Like, because I don't think he knew where we were going to go with it, but we knew where we were going to go with it. So I was like, we're touring Cause it was, I saw the half baked. So I was like, said that on the call. I'm like, Bob, you're going to, you know, show that other side of your persona. You know, we're going to go against raising dad. We're going to go against, you know, America's Funniest Video. You're going to show that other side, like the half baked and the HBO. And he's like, I love that. You know, he's like, I love it. I love it. And, um, it was really about scheduling because he was so busy. So once he committed, it was just fucking on. There was one like humongous, dope, sick house that's up there hidden. And it's fucking pimp as fuck. But it's Hollywood royalty house. It's not like modern, but it's so pimp. That's the house we were going to use as Bob's house. Cause I, he's like, well, you're going to come to my house, dude. And people in Brentwood know where I live. And what the fuck, dude? Palisades. And I was, we were like, no. He knew, but it was like, it's a weird show. So you don't know what we're going to do. We got this insane house in the location. And you're like, well, what's the house? Well, you'll know now because the house basically became Vincent Chase's house in Entourage. That's where we shot this, which is all intertwined quantum entanglement because Bob... One of the other things that blew him up was that scene in Entourage, you know, doing coke two days straight. I was, that's just weird. It's like foreshadowing of like, you know, whatever, right? So we do, we go, we rehearse, whatever. And the whole thing is, is that Bob didn't know like all the stuff we were going to do. So, you know, people come on the tour, there was people in on the bit and then there's their friends and they're like, what the fuck? And then there was like, I love Bob Saget t-shirts and we just really leaned into the lore of what Bob Saget, what people didn't think he was. And there was like fucking Percocets and some Coke and all this stuff. It was so great to go against his image. And then, and then the house, somebody fucking, <laughs> I want to say the hand. That was our, our lead prop man and decorator and set man and 
eventually directed, but I think they put a pig's head in the fridge. So we made it like Bob was into some drugs. Bob had a lot of Bob pictures, a little narcissistic. And then I think we had him Bob like doing like a little Santeria or some shit. Like so and Bob was like, yo, what the fuck is that? When he came to shoot the pit. And we're like, that's big that he's like he's like, is that gonna fly? And we're like, yeah, just leave. So, you know, we really pushed the envelope and he was great about everything. He was even surprised what we were trying to do. So we just started doing it and running the marks through the bus. I'm on the bus, we had our driver, you know, and then and then Bob comes home. And then I'm like, hi guys, Bob's here. Uh, hey Bob, listen, this is, this is cool that I come to the tour and everything, but Bob's here, so um, just hide. Hide! Hide! The greatest thing about the bit is Bob, is he was so angry, he was like, you're in my house. You're in my fucking house. Like he's so good. And it was so opposite of what people thought. Like I've never seen him angry in real life. So he really leaned in. Michael, just hold, stay on the phone with me. Okay. Someone's in my house. Just stay on the phone with me. Just hold on. The phone with me. Just hold on. Wait a minute, hang on what? a second. What's stay on the on? phone, Michael. Hold here? on a second, there's some people in What's my house. On? Hello? Excuse me, are you Michael, what are you so people stay on doing the phone? here? Veronica, <laughs> come here, Sarah, and get your ass. Oh Call 911. What's going on? What's Bob, going on remember, here? I used to be your assistant, Kenny, on Raising Dad. Excuse me? Raising Dad, remember I was your assistant at the beginning of the season. He's that wacky PA no, guy no. that got fired from the show. <laughs> this is that weird guy that worked. Do me a favor. Nobody go anywhere. Get high and mighty. I'm sorry. Just don't get high and mighty. I wanted to bring it's a my house. house. You're not breaking into a guy's house. No, I wanted to bring a few people. I in, have a dude. private life. I know. I'm not the one with the porno tapes upstairs, and they all saw it. That's the you person. You all saw it, right? You, you all saw the porno tapes. Shut up. That's a person. No, that dude, stay back. That's a person that I'm dating. Stay back. I've been dating a really weird girl, and there's a lot of oh, all this, this stuff in the myself? fridge and the bed and stuff and all this? the tapes and everything. That's just her. That's not Wait me. Wait a minute. What did you just say? I did it by myself. You went on Bob's bed and you broke his bed. Yes, you did. You went in his bed and you said the skull was weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling you a liar. You went in his bed. What are you going to do? Yeah, you yeah, you were. Please sit down. Yeah. You shouldn't you threaten please, me, man. Please LA Tours, we know I'm karate. You can take this stupid shirt. These are for charity, for sick kids. You don't even give a about anybody. You are some kind of weird, stalky, freak ass guy that just. Oh, a and you're of a minutes. star? You got no guys around the world. So that bit was just. I mean, that was our promo bit. That was, ding, 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 ding. You know, that song. And that was the bit that we. It just it was one of the highlights of the series. One of definitely the highlight of that year. And just it's became an all time prank bit. Like and it's funny because my show is so has such a cult following, but it's right under the edge of being mainstream. Maybe if it gets streamed somewhere it will be. But no matter where you go, when people come up to me about that bit, I mean the show, it's always that bit. They always talk to me when you broke into Saget's house, man. You broke into Saget's house. And it was just awesome. It was just fucking awesome. And it really, it really made me, you know. So, so where are we at so far in this, in this Saget saga, this journey? Is that this wildly talented, beautiful, wonderful, giving man happens to be from my same area, becomes this comedian that, you know, I see, I just happen to see. And then a huge TV star, iconic TV star. On Bob owned The weekend. Bob was number one on Friday and number one on Sunday. He took Saturdays off. Who can say that? This is before everything and Snapchat. This was fucking two weekend nights out of three. He was number one to the point where fucking America's Funniest Video has never gone off. He could have hosted that for 35 fucking years if he wanted. It's still on. It's never going away. And Full House came back and all the reruns are still on all over the world just to do that once. But he was doing it twice and it's still in the zeitgeist. It's just incredible. Plus his specials and acting parts and directing and all this other stuff that we haven't got to yet. But, you know, and then I, and then I get to... 
I mean, just so then I get to open for him a couple times, you know, really just guest spots. And then I'm on the same network with him. And then I end up working with him. So it's like, why? How did I get involved with this man? How how did this even happen to me? It was like, were we drawn together? Was it energies? Was it Philly? I don't know. Slowly, Bob be, started becoming my my big brother. I already have a big brother, but Bob became my other big brother and, and, a, and a mentor and a protector and a, and a Sherpa. He was a real, he's a real guide. And some ways he knew, and other ways I don't know, he realized that what he did for me. I mean, he put me on in comedy and trusted me when I had, you know, 13 minutes on a show that I could have fucked it up. Then he comes on my show where I'm a new guy on the network and he's the established legend and he lent his talents and his time to my show. And whatever people say on social media, he clouded me up. By him doing that, he shone, I got some of his shine. And by him allowing me to just say, just let's get crazy in this bit and do this, whatever. And once we did it like once or twice, he was so happy. He's like, this is fucking crazy. I love it. And he's like, I'm like, okay, now let's just go absolutely nuts. I'm going to fuck with this lady. I want you to tell this lady. He's like, well, yeah, let's go. Like He was so into it. And that's, that's, he was affecting me and helping me in my stand-up career. That's one vertical of art. And then in my TV career, that's another vertical of art. And then he helped me in another vertical of my career, which I'll get to in a little bit. But this other one, he would just support me as a, as a, as a friend. We were becoming friends. Bob started, he was really supportive. And I'll never forget, like I'm at the Malibu's premiere. Bob was sitting with my mom talking and he's sitting with my dad. And, and he fucking, he got cornered by my crazy sister. She's not gonna like I said this. My fucking crazy sister, Mary's like, Bob, you know when you do that one video? And he's like, uh-huh. Like he fucking totally humored her in a booth back at Man's Chinese, man, the after party at Hollywood Island. Fucking cornered her and he took it. And I'm like, Mary, leave Bob alone. He's like, I love Bob. Like, I remember that premiere, like so many different reasons. There's a lot of premieres I can talk about, but that was a premiere that was like Hollywood was putting me on. But Malibu's was the first time it was my name above the title. I have to find a picture. And it was Jamie Kennedy. And I was the star. I mean, all, all, all the cast was incredible. There's people that come to support. And there's people that are, I have to look at the, who was there to premiere. But, you know, I really wanted Bob. And Bob came. Bob came. Bob came. And I'll never forget it, you know. Like I said, people came and we were having a Good time. He was there for a while. Just chilling. Just getting cornered by my sister. Talking to my mom. You know, catching up with people. And I'll never forget this. I'll never forget it. I'm walking outside. And Bob, he pulls me aside. And I'm like standing by like Earl Flynn's like footprints. And he's just like, you should be proud of yourself, man. You should really be proud of yourself. You made a fucking classic. And I'm like, dude, thank you so much. You know, he's like, let me tell you something. You're on to something here. He's like, look, man, I'm, you know, stand up and TV, you know, but you got the movies, dude. He's like, I never was starring in movies. And I said, yeah, but you're Bob Saget. You know, he goes, let me tell you something. He's like, let's just, he goes, you just, he's like, just stay your course. Because you're doing fantastic. You're really doing fantastic. And he was, he was so just encouraging to me and stayed so late just to chill. <sighs> it's probably going to be a three-parter. This is just part one. So much more to say. I want to share what you know about Bob with you. And I want to share my great experiences with Bob. So I want you to see many sides of the man. And I don't know where that's going to go, but uh, I just love talking about it. Stay tuned for part two. Guys, if you like this, you know what to do. Ring the bell, subscribe, leave comments. There's no me without you. Much love.